Hi, I'm Dr. Shamik Sen. Today we're going to have a quick look at risk neutral pricing. Since remember we when we were pricing call options in Excel using Monte Carlo, we had to set the interest rate as the risk free one. Which kind of doesn't make sense. You're kind of going, well, what about if my share is one which is booming up, which has been increasing at 40% a year for the last three years, everyone's raving about it. This is fantastic. Surely that should be priced differently to another share which has been doing nothing for the last 10 years. I'm not convinced. So I'd said, okay, we're going to have another little look at risk neutral pricing later on, which is what this video is. So risk neutral pricing is used in complete markets. In a complete market, you can short things and basically hedge your positions if you want. Basically, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So you don't get to buy something which is worth $100 for $98. If you could, well, you just borrow everything you could, snap it up and make guaranteed profit. So things are given their fair value. So by fair value, I mean from a, in a probabilistic sense. You take into account, okay, it might do this, it might do that, and you work out the expect, expected value, and that's your fair value. So if you toss a coin and you get $100, if you win, so say if you get, if you manage to call whether it's heads or tails and you get zero if you get it wrong then the fair value for that is fifty dollars since at best you're gonna get it right at best you're gonna get it right half the time in fact at worst yeah since it's a random coin you're not able to lose if you're trying to it's as easy to win as it is to lose. So basically, if in that game where you're tossing a coin, half the time you'll get $100, half the time you'll get zero. So the expected value is $50, and that is the fair value. So with a share, say, which costs $100 today, it might go up to 250 because there's a new product coming out, um, that market's growing, Everyone's raving about it. It's a sure thing. But it might go down to $60. There might be a scandal. Who knows? So in a trading market, this is all factored in leading to the current price. Because you've got thousands, if not millions of people all placing their bets given the information that they have. The fundamental theorem of asset pricing states that a market's complete if and only if there exists a unique equivalent martingale measure which is a generalization of the risk neutral measure it also states that the markets arbitrage free if and only if there exists a unique equivalent martingale measure So what that means is if you have any one of the three, you have all of them. If the market is arbitrage free, then from the second statement, we know that there exists a unique equivalent Martingale measure. If there exists a unique equivalent Martingale measure, then from the first statement, we know that the market is complete. Since there's no such thing as a free lunch, the best returns we can expect is the risk-free one. 
anything above that would be a free lunch. Hence, that's what we use in our Monte Carlo simulations. Remember, that's what we began with. When we were doing our simulations, we had to set what the trend growth was for our share. And the problem was, why, what should we set that to? We could look at the historical rate at which the share has been growing. But in the end, we saw that if we set it to the inf interest, to the risk free interest rate, then we got the correct answer. We got the same answer as the one that was given by the analytic formula. Okay, there's random noise since, since it's Monte Carlo, but that's that was our problem. And we were sitting there going, are we really allowed to do that? Does that make sense? Well, if there's no such, if there's no arbitrage, if there's no such thing as a free lunch, then the best we can expect is the risk-free one. And that's why we're allowed to use that as our interest rate in our models. If you have some shares, we can buy shorts, given that it's a complete market. Then we can hold a combination of shares and shorts so that our portfolio is risk free. This cannot produce returns above the risk free rate since otherwise there is arbitrage. So once you go through that process, that all makes sense. That seems reasonable. Slight add on. Note that this is that this involves dynamic hedging. So that the ratio of shares to shorts needs to be adjusted constantly. But that's a detail, a tactical aside more than the bigger picture that by having a combination of shares and shorts you can end up with a risk-free portfolio and that can only produce returns at the risk all that can only produce the risk-free interest rate of course you can buy shares and make more than the interest free rate or the risk-free interest rate, that should be, but not on average. So sometimes you'll win and it'll be great, but sometimes you'll lose. Now you might think that this is a great deal. You know, the share has been growing at 40% a year. It's bound to continue forever. Well, the person who sold you the share obviously doesn't feel the same way. That's what makes a market. So we have links to other sites in the description below this video where it goes into greater depth. So you can look at discussions about risk neutral pricing, where the definitions of the fundamental theorem of asset pricing and all those things are, and just clear things up in your head.